Hello, my friends. Welcome to Henrik's Building Lounge. I am Henrik, and today I have a very special build for you. This is how I'm going to Mills Cube my city in 2024 and beyond. This design obviously inspired by the standard cubes used by the New Hiroshima project that has millions and millions of pieces and just as many views on YouTube, Instagram, and beyond. However, when trying to look up the instructions, you end up with a page not found error on their link. So I have reverse engineered most of it and adapted it to what I need for my city. There are some small differences. I'm gonna go through how to build it, how to use it, there will be timestamps in the description and in the timeline, so you can skip to whatever part you want. And without further ado, let's get started. All right, my friends, let me show you how to build this thing. This is bag one of one. And it is one of one because it is of my design. So I ordered the parts from the online pick-a-brick. If you're using the studio file that I'm going to link in the description, you can use BrickLink to get all the parts necessary to build this exact same thing. All right, instead of going bag by bag, since there's only one bag, I'm gonna go part by part, starting with the columns, and then we're gonna add the top and bottom corners, and then we're gonna put it all together and then add some finishing touches. Let's get started. All right, my friends, this is the bag all nulled out. Since mocks don't come with instructions unless you're making them yourself. All right, step one is you're gonna take eight one by 16 Technic bricks and put three pins in them five holes apart, starting on one end. Again, we need eight of these. Step two is adding matching one by 16 Technic bricks so that we end up with a two by 16 Technic brick half column without plates on either side for now. All right, so you can see the three pins here. That's all there is to it. Next, you're gonna wanna add two by four tiles on top and lining up two of those half columns together to form a two by 32 column piece. We're gonna add to this by the way, but for now, these are column pieces. Um, <clears throat> two by fours, the Center is on the center covering the two half columns. And then on the ends, you just add two by twos. Very easy. Now on to the next step, getting this part plated up. Step four, we have our columns here plated on the rear end now. In the middle, we have a two by 12 and on the sides we have two by tens. Do this for each of the four columns. Step five is adding the additional structural support to each of the four columns. And we do that by adding a two by two plate on each side and two of the one by two bricks with an axle hole in it. It's gonna add that additional structural integrity on the top and bottom of the cube. All right, now our columns are done and they look great already. One side is completely flat with tiles and the other side has the additional support. And just for good measure, we have pins along the entire column, three on each half. You can add more if you're paranoid, but we like to build onto things using spare Technic pinholes. 
So we got to leave some open for interpretation. All right, time to move on to building the corners. And we're going to do that on the top and on the bottom. Step six, we add pins on each side of the end of the column. So one pin here, one pin here, and then a four stud length axle into the plus signs. <laughs> Each side, all four columns. And the idea is to build the corners around the columns rather than having them in a separate structure and putting them together later. Step seven, for each of the columns, we wanna take a one by 14, that's the one on the inside, and a one by 16, that's the one on the outside. We affix it to the bottom of the column where the axle and the pin are sticking out. Step eight is going around the corner for each of these columns. And this time the one by 14 is on the outside and the one by 16 is on the inside. And we affix it to the column with a two by six plate like you see here. Do this for all four columns. Step nine is building four of these guys. So here we have a two by six plate joining a one by six Technic brick and a one by six regular brick. And on the other side, we have two more one by twos with axle hole. And then we have our one by four axle going through it. Very sturdy. Step 10 is adding our little corner assembly to the actual column. You may have to lift the two by six plate off a little bit, but once you could jigger it onto there, it's gonna be very stable. Scratch that, add the inner part first with the Technic bricks and the axle, and then add the one by six brick with two by six plate on top of it. That'll make it easier to add it to the main column assembly. Step 11 is finishing up the plating. We've added another two by four plate on the top here where there was a gap. And on the bottom, we've got, <clears throat> we've got a two by six on this side, two two by fours to fill out the, the, the sides of the column. And then on the flat side of the column on the bottom, we want a two by eight plate. Do this for all four column pieces. Okay, with the bottom corners now done, it's time to look towards the top corners. And the first part of that in step 12 is you take, <clears throat> you take one by 16 bricks, Technic bricks, and one by 14 Technic bricks. The 16 is gonna go on the outside, the 14 is gonna go on the inside, and before fixing it to the corner setups, you're gonna secure them together using some plates. Here's a two by two and a two by three flat and two one by fours with studs on the sides or not on the sides, but like no studs in the center. All right, so let's see what that looks like on this assembly here. Just gonna affix that like this. Hopefully it works with one hand. There we go. Do this for all four columns. All right, in step 13, we're doing the other side of the top corner. And that is very similar to the other part. We have the one by 14 and the one by 16 inverted. So the 14 length goes on the outside and the 16 goes on the inside. We played it before affixing it to the assembly. 
and this is what it looks like. We want a two by six overhanging by two studs and then a two by three and then a two by six at the other side. Let's see what it looks like. Do that. And that's it for each corner. One of these. Step 14 should look familiar based on the bottom corner, but we've got our two one by two with axle hole bricks with an axle in between to make it extra stable and sturdy. We affix a one by six Technic brick to each of them, do this four times, and then go ahead and add them to your assembly here. And for reference, this is what it looks like because I didn't want to try doing this with one hand. In step 15, we add a two by six plate and our familiar one by six brick underneath at the end to round the corner off. And we add more of these one by fours with only two studs on top. Do this for all four assemblies. Step 16 involves turning these assemblies upside down like that and copying what you did in the bottom corner. As you can see, the plating is the exact same thing. Do this for all four assemblies and I believe that's it for each of the four corners. Step 17, you can now line all of the assemblies up into a cube like this. Step 18, we've joined all four corners with these one by four with two studs on top plates. And on the bottom, we've added on the bottom, we've added some two by 14 plates. And I realized I made a mistake earlier. It's not a two by eight that goes here on the flat side of the column. It's a two by 10. Step 19 on one side and one side only on the bottom of our cube. We have a two by 10 on top joining the frame and a two by 10 on the bottom. And on the opposite side, we've got a two by eight and a two by six on the bottom. Step 20, it's finally time to use the 16 by 16 plates. We've got one here and we've got one here. And then on the far side, we have a, an eight by 16 plate. The alignment should be very uh, self-explanatory since there's only 16 studs you can use up on the bottom of each of these three sides. They will look like this when you try to attach them. All right, in step 21, we have a very familiar looking grid of two by two bricks. This is why I like to call this a 3D Mills cube. We do have most of a Mills plate available to us here. Do note the addition of some two by six plates underneath these uh, two by two bricks. One on this corner. There's another one on the other corner. And then a third one on this corner just fills it out. And there we go. We have our mills floor. Let's add more plates in the next step. Step 22, the final step is done. And as you can see, I've added all the four by four plates that came in the bag. Looks great, doesn't it? And we've got this wide open gap for wire management. Why did I decide to put the hole on the side? Well, if we look above, I've got a wall behind my city. And what that means is this hole is going to be wall side. And I can build stuff in front here, have cable management going through the back, 
and it's going to be amazing. Okay, friends, now here's a shot of what a building looks like on top of one of these cubes. As you can see, it looks amazing. So amazing, in fact, that we have a minifigure taking it easy on the rooftop. But here, check this out. This is the more important part. We have a Mills plated building on top of a Mills cube or a New Hashima style cube rather. The Mills plate does not snap on directly, but rather the one by four with two studs on top plates just help align this thing and make sure that there's no slippage. That's all it's for. And the weight gets transferred onto the four columns directly. We don't want any of the weight coming in from the sides. That would be bad for heavier structures. But yeah, this is what it looks like. It is very stable. It can survive a minor earthquake. Very cool. And this is it, my friends. This is how Bookcase City is going to expand in 2024 and beyond. I'm gonna be building six of these to go underneath the six buildings that are between the two larger bookcases that I have. And the bridge will have its own thing going on as well. The roads can go on the bottom part of this Mills cube using all the technicals. These columns can be decorated. And I'm going to be filling this with sets, mocks, mocks of sets, combining things, all kinds of cool stuff coming up. If you've enjoyed this video or if you found it helpful for your own bookcase city or Lego city in general, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And until next time, I'm going to build more Lego.